Man, I'm tired of stuff not making sense. to all my sports card collectors, investors, all of my collectibles friends. I made a video yesterday about SGC and just how happy I am about various parts of that company and just different things about SGC. And I had a comment on that video from one of my hobby friends, Rob Neo Cards and Comics, and he was making a comparison between a PSA 10 Joe Burrow Prism rookie card and an SGC 10 Prism rookie card, and it was literally like half the price. An SGC 10 was half the price of a PSA 10. And I was thinking, he has no idea what he's talking about. He has to be wrong. There's no way. That seems insane that that could be true. I'm sure he's probably picking like one sale that he found here and one sale that he found there and put it together. So I was asking him, and actually we took it onto Twitter like we were playing Double Dragon or something. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you pulled one card out of a billion cards to make an example out of. Is that an average of the sale prices? And I took a look myself. He was like, nope, there's six or seven different sales at SGC, and there's a bunch on the PSA side. And I took a look myself, and I was shocked to see that, that he was right. He was actually right that it's half the price for an SGC 10 Joe Bro Prism Base Rookie card. Now, Prism Base and Base Rookie cards in general have not been very popular. Joe Burrow is the hottest player on the planet right now outside of, I don't know, Ja Morant maybe, but Joe Burrow, it's Super Bowl week. It is your time to shine in the sports card hobby right this second. So that is why Neil was making that particular comparison. He picked that particular player and Prism obviously kind of being kind of a baseline for the rest of the hobby and blah, blah, blah. And so I understood it. But I was shocked at the inefficiency in price. And I was actually even looking too, I'm thinking like, like, okay, well, how many are graded? How many SGC 10s are out there? Maybe there's just a lot of SGC 10s. How many PSAs are out there? No, there's literally 200 and some SGC 10s, another like 200 and some SGC 9s, and excuse me, 9.5s, and another 170 SGC 9s. I took a look at their population report. And then I look at the PSA 10 population report. It's currently at about 2,600 or so and counting probably for Burrow Prism rookie cards. So there's way more Prism rookie cards essentially that are on that population report. Now, how many are actually for sale? How many are in the float, et cetera? How many are in collections? That's a whole different ball game. But I was just shocked to see that even though there was far less of the SGC 10s, they were still selling for half the price. Now, this is one example. The card market is massive. And so I did take a look at a comparison and I just picked one card. Actually, I just pulled it right out of my butt. Uh, 84 Tops Dan Marino. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to go way back vintage if I go like 60s cards, you know, because the the uh, sales are, are, are tough to find. But in, but 80s cards, in general, they're not rare. You know, it's not rare to see PSA 9 80s cards. And so Dan Marino rookie card, 84 Tops. I looked up PSA 9 prices compared to SGC 9 prices, and they are basically the same. I even saw some SGC pricing that was more than the PSA 9. So I would definitely want to dig deep deeper into this um, because I do think that there's so much nuance to it. And also I think there's so much heavy, heavy focus on, you know, as far as content goes, so much focus on ultra modern. I mean, a lot of the players we're talking about, a lot of the cards that are talked about are 2016 and, and up to today. And that's really about it. You know, there's not a lot of talk about stuff that's before then, especially once you go like pre 2010, but that just seems like a wild price inefficiency. Why would somebody pay twice as much for a PSA 10 compared to an SGC 10 for a 2020 card. And I, I get it's Joe Burrow, okay? It's a great player. He's, he's fun. He's, you know, he's right here in the news. But, and, and if you do say like, oh, well, PSA has that full-blown guarantee. You know, if PSA has got the guarantee, if that card ends up being trimmed or fake or whatever, then I've got some recourse. I can go back and they will, you know, work with me and all that. Yeah, that makes sense to me for expensive cards. Because yes, PSA is carrying insurance to be able to, when there's claims against, you know, 
a, a weird grade on something or, you know, they, they graded a fake card, then if it's a $5,000 card or a $2,000 card or a $50,000 card, then yes, that makes a lot of sense to me. I would want that in a PSA slab more than likely. But for a three, four, five hundred dollar card, why? Why is it half the price? And I want to hear from you all. And I know PSA folks jump in. I know there's a lot of PSA homers. There's also SGC homers. And then there's probably BGS people that are like, well, hold on a second. What about the BGS 9.5s? This is a big reason why I've been buying SGC 10s and frankly, SGC 9.5s. And if anything, if you're a PSA person, if you see it at half the price, I even saw some of those bros that were $270 compared to $650 for a PSA 10 of that base bro prism card. I mean, if, even if you're a PSA person, you could buy it for $270, wait for the PSA prices to go down. If you're someone that cracks it, sends it in, then you can get it in a PSA case. If it's an SGC 10, I think it's got a pretty good shot at getting a PSA 10. SGC is just as tough, if not tougher, than PSA. So uh, I don't know. It's kind of an interesting, uh, you know, just a thought there with with ultra modern cards. Now, of course, like I said with that Dan with the Dan Reno example, I think there's a wide swash swath of the hobby where SGC and PSA is very even. It's just not talked about because there's not a lot of content being made on Dan Marino PSA nines versus SGC nine rookie cards. You know, and I think that's interesting data. So for those, actually, let me know in the comments if you want to see deeper dives on price comparison like that for stuff that's not just ultra modern. Uh, let me know that. Let me know that in the comments because I'm, I'm happy to do some of that work and make videos on it. And it can be baseball, football, basketball. Once you go back a little bit too far, though, it gets tricky because there's not as much SGC that's that's graded. Look, PSA is grading a lot more cards than SGC overall. So it's going to be a lot easier to find PSA comps compared to SGC comps for a lot of cards. So it does get a little bit sticky there. But for like 80s cards are a perfect example of that where you can find, you know, a decent number of SGC graded cards compared to compared to others. But let me know. I want to hear feedback from you all. Um, thanks uh, for playing along with this one, Rob. You, everyone jokes with him that he's anti-SGC, but he did did say in the comments that he believes SGC being kind of a new number two, and he gets that. It's just when you start comparing SGC to PSA, it really riles his feathers, and so I like to kind of go back and forth with him on that. But I thought that was some interesting data to share, and want to just kind of see also if you all have heard too of other types of comparisons, other cards where it's a dead even comparison, because this is important, I think, too, for viewership and people watching, because we're all trying to find deals. And look, regardless of the case that that card is sitting in, it's still the card that is sitting in the case. There's not a huge difference, not much at all, between a 2020 Prism card that's sitting in a PSA case compared to an SGC case. They're, they're it's the same. It's the same cards. They're just in different slabs. So uh, good debate, good stuff. So make sure to catch Jeff, the sports card investor. He will be on Brad the Comeback Card Investors channel for our off-centered show that's every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. We will be on at 9 p.m. Eastern tonight, guys. So I will see you then. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.